Well, we got a lot of work done today. Uh, you know, the emphasis today was to try to get as much situational work done as possible. Uh, you know, not only in the the uh, the game planning. You know, because we want our coaches to be able to. Um, to react, they did not know a lot of the situations that they were going to get today. Uh, so I wanted them to be prepared uh, to be able to call from the sideline uh, different scenarios. So today was a little bit for our coordinators to make sure that we got personnel groupings and situations. We moved the hashes around and down a distance, and uh, personnel groupings got some ST in there. So it was a good uh, it was a good day. We got a lot of great film. Uh, gives us an evaluation, uh, another tool to evaluate where we are after uh, two weeks uh, of practice for our football team. Got a chance to see uh, a lot of players today. And uh, like I said, after two weeks, a good way to finish the second week for us um, as we now uh, begin to really hone in uh, on our units and uh, those guys that are going to be preparing for our opener. So with that, we'll open it up to uh, questions. Coach, uh, uh, I know you spoke of, you inform us of significant injuries. Is <coughs> Springman's leg uh, fall under that category as far as Temple? Goes Don't know yet. Um, we'll have an MRI and we'll get some further information here. Um, you know, at, at first glance, it's, it's anytime there's a knee involved, you're always concerned. But I can't give you any definitive information. We'll, we'll know a little bit more next time we get together. When do we get together again? Oh, can't wait. Thursday, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to, to give you a little bit more information. And you guys will probably know before Thursday, the way things, you guys investigate things. Uh, but I don't have any definitive, anytime it's a knee, you're really concerned. Um, that one probably is one that we're a little bit more concerned with right now. Uh, Danny uh, announced today to the team that he no longer will be playing football. Um, I am not going to get into any of the specifics. His fam Danny and his family will release a statement relative to uh, his reasons for not playing, which are medical, um, and uh, get into the specifics uh, with that, that release early next week. So expect to hear from him and his family directly early next week. The specifics for me to stand up here and get into them are extremely complicated. Um, relative to his medical condition. So I'll leave that up to his doctors and his family and Danny himself uh, to give a full explanation of, of the reasons. But he's going to stay with us. He's going to help us coach the drops. Who's better qualified uh, to give his experience, to help us with Jalen uh, and Ben. And uh, we'll cross-train uh, Romeo Hokora at that position as well. And uh, so he got a chance to talk to the team today. He's, you know, beloved by everybody on our team. And, and so we're, you know, obviously, uh, you know, he, he has a special place on our football team. So does that become a position battle for Jalen and Ben now, or is Jalen on the first? Oh, no, that, they're both. They're both going to play. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both going to play a lot. Right, well, uh, crutches with the large High team. ankle sprain. Uh, you know how those go, right? Two weeks, maybe 10 days. He's in jeopardy. Um, I didn't have him on the significant category. Um, well, the, the high ankle sprain is one where it usually is three to four days before you really know the length of it. Um, early indications, he moved around pretty good this morning in the pool. So we'll, we'll find out um, a little bit more. We think he's going to be close, uh, but it's a high ankle sprain. Um, others are going to be back. You know, we had Watt out. We got Hanwright. All those guys will be back. The guys that are not going to be back, we talked about Springman, right? He's not going to be back for Temple. Uh, we don't know the severity of that until we get all the medical information. Um, we're going to do corrective surgery on Randolph's shoulder. We had a pre-existing condition on his shoulder, so he will not play this year. So we're going to correct the shoulder issue with him. Obviously, we know about Nicky Barati uh, and his shoulder surgery. Both of those will occur this week. I think we're scheduling those for Tuesday. 
Eric, you're loving it. This, this is, is this, is this the best press conference? This is the best this, ever. <laughs> and it's going to get better. Is it really? Is there I'm more? I'm going to pile on and say Montalus and McGovern, where do they stand? Uh, McGovern went full today for the first time, uh, and uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to Harry, uh, Harry Heastan, our offensive line coach, uh, but we cleared him last night to go. John's making great progress. Uh, the reports out of the training room outstanding in terms of his progress. Uh, but I want to I want to get back on my train of thought in terms of guys that are out. Um, we know Barati, uh, we know Randolph. Um, Springman's out, and, and then of course, uh, Danny Spond. The rest of the guys we expect close to, or if not, you know, ready to play for Temple. That includes Daniel Smith? Danny Smith, yeah, he's running. Um, we expect him next week to be cleared full go. All right, we got the injuries done. Corey had a couple pretty nice catches on Bennett. Are you seeing the consistency out of him now start to sort of match his athletic ability? You know, where, where he catches the football, obviously, you know he's numbers outside. He's been extremely consistent in that area of the field. Um, where we got to continue to work with him is as he, he breaks inside, uh, you know, he, he's got to get stronger, more physical, but there's no question that he can help us um, on the perimeter. You know, he, he catches the football. He consistently catches the football. It doesn't matter who he goes up against. If the ball's put in the right position, he's going to come down with it. Kind of the same question with Greg. Are you sort of seeing the consistency match the athletic ability there, too? Greg. Brian. Uh, well, Greg is, is a lot different than Corey. You know, Corey is, you know, throw the ball. You know, Greg has to learn the entire offense. You know, so there's a lot more there for Greg. Greg's doing extremely well, and of course, I've gotten an opportunity to spend some more time with him. Uh, he's, uh, he's a great kid, hard worker. Uh, he's going to be a really good player. And, and uh, he, pick up, he picks things up quickly. Um, but he's got some more work to do. There's so much more for the running back, you know. Um, but he's done a nice job. He's, got, he's just got so much more uh, to learn uh, than, than Corey does. Brian? How are you seeing Eshak's role evolve? Um, and and is, do you think a vision in playing some end? Oh, he's going to play. He's, he's going to be the first, you know, he'll be the first split side end in. So, you know, he, he'll be the first guy in, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, he won't, he won't come in at the, the, the stud position, but he'll come in as the third end, um, you know, immediately. So his hand's going to go down on the ground and, and play and force. So he'll, he'll get quite a bit of work there. And are you happy with what you're seeing? Absolutely. Now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he, he can play all the techniques. He can do the things that we're asking him to do. And uh, he's done them very well. We're, we're very pleased with him. What has Ron Stanley done to put himself in the position where he is right now, working with the units? Well, I think, first of all, it, you know, he's. Uh, he, the game comes to him pretty easy, you know. It's he doesn't fight it, and he's massive. <laughs> his size, you know, he's strong, he's physical, he moves his feet well. So he's got he's got the skill and long arms. He has all of those intangible traits and real traits of an offensive tackle that you're looking for. And uh, you know, he's got toughness. You know, he's a tough kid. You know. And Elmer at guard there. Is that a flexibility aspect again? He might put between tackle and guard depending on depth situation. Steve Elmer can play anywhere other than center. Right now, I mean, he's just, he he can play center. I mean, I mean, he can play any of the guard or tackle positions. He's uh, he, he we got great flexibility with him. He's more comfortable at left tackle. But if we had to play him at any of the guard positions or tackle positions, we could put him in, and he could play. From the Stanford game his sophomore year <coughs> to now, what's been the development of Andrew in terms of his presence in the huddle and his execution on the field? Um, I would say um, 
just knowledge of, of the game, you know, it's just more aware of circumstances of the game, the game itself, you know, down in distance and pressures and what teams are trying to do and defenses are trying to do. I think it's just an all overall understanding of the game. You know, he's, uh, you know, he, he's not that prototypical gym rat, if you will. And I, and I don't want to say that that's a negative, but he, he, did, he didn't grow up kind of with the game itself. So he's become so much more uh, understanding of the game itself. You know, he can recognize things so much easier when you're talking about different looks and understanding the concepts. So it's just, I think, understanding the game more than anything else, Alan. It's just film study and watching film and being in the film room and all those things that go with, it's just come a little bit later for him, but, but, it's, but it's coming. How did he stay positive through a year when he was number three, didn't play a lot, and then he goes to the <coughs> spring and he's still number three and not playing a lot, and then everything happens to Everett. But how did he stay positive through the time when it didn't look like he was going to get a lot of playing time? Well, I mean, really probably wasn't happy about it, but he's such a great character kid that he probably – he focused on what he could do to help the team in whatever capacity. And he did, you know. Sometimes he went over and helped the scout team. And whatever role he was asked, he, he, he really was a team guy. I don't know that he really enjoyed it, um, but, you know, he's such a great kid and a great teammate that he did whatever was necessary. But I'm sure he went home at night going, this stinks. You know, nobody really likes that. But he accepted his role, and that's why he's such a, a great kid. Brian, what's your opinion of, of Stefan, how he showed up for fall camp from a conditioning standpoint, from an attitude, confidence standpoint? Can you kind of evaluate that? Yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot about, you know, his body type. Look, the kid had a hernia operation. He couldn't do core exercises for over three and a half months. I mean, we had, to, we had to change his whole summer workout in terms of, you saw, you know what our guys look like. I mean, he looks different because he put on some body fat that our guys don't normally put on because he couldn't do some of the workouts that our guys do. It wasn't because he decided to eat, you know, Cheetos on the couch and not work out. I mean, he had to do a different workout. We're now working really hard to take some of that body fat and bring him down. And he's doing, he's doing a nice job. He's bringing that body fat down. But he's stronger physically than he was last year. He just put on a little bit more body. We'll get that down. That's easy to whittle that down. Um, his volume is at where it was last year, so we didn't lose any of his volume. Um, but the fact of the matter is we couldn't do a lot of the core work because they went, they went and, and did an operation and put a, a mesh web up in his abdomen. And, you know, we couldn't do a lot of the work that we normally do with our guys. And um, that put him behind the, uh, the eight ball. So I know he's been asked a lot of questions. And I, I want to kind of defend the kid a little bit uh, in this instance that, um, you know, he didn't go off the reservation and decide that, you know, he was just, just going to eat bad food. Um, he's, he's done what we've asked him to do. And in terms of his confidence and the way he's handled being preseason All-American and so forth, how would you evaluate those things? Oh, he's been great. You know, he hasn't been – you know me. I'm going to immediately uh, get after you if, if you're bigger than the team. And he's been great. Um, he's handled himself well. Um, he's practiced well. Both him and Lewis have been great. And, you know, I, I meet with these guys individually. I talk to them about – you know, my job is is to get him to ready, ready to to win for Notre Dame, um, and uh, you know we give him a great platform to do it here at Notre Dame, and uh, and then the NFL comes second, and they get that, and so they've been great. They've worked hard. They've been good teammates. I have no problems with either one of those guys, in particular, uh, Stefan, and, and um, relative to um, their aspirations. Brian, just uh, not getting into the specifics about Danny, but how unfortunate it is, obviously, for someone who clearly loves playing football and being here and seems like one of your genuine great character people on this team. 
for him to have to, to now shut it down for football? Yeah, I mean, I think what was pretty um, apparent was that it was an emotional decision and it didn't come without a lot of thought. Um, you know, he, uh, he, he spent the, the day speaking to, um, to a lot of specialists and um, his family was here. So this was not a decision that came easy. He loves his teammates. But I think what's most important is he did what's in his best interest for his future. And uh, he's got a bright future. And his, his immediate is that he wants to be with the team. And, and our teammates were excited to hear that he's gonna be with us every day. He'll travel with us, he'll help coach. And um, so I think they, they, they see in one sense, they're not gonna have a teammate, but they're gonna have somebody that's gonna be with them every day and he'll truly be uh, seen every day. So I, I think, although disappointed that he won't be on the field, they know that he's still gonna be a member of this team. Brian, Kurt Shembo is not often a topic of conversation between you and us. I mean, is that a reflection of just his steadiness and he's durable and he's out there and you can count on him? Yeah, you know, I think you guys are missing the boat on Prince Shembo, and I'm glad you brought him up because, he, you know, he, uh, He's just, the way he plays, the passion that he plays the game, every single play, um, it's just so enjoyable. He's a throwback in a lot of ways um, with his energy and his toughness and the way he comes to work every day. It's 100% all in. And he plays the game with that, that chip, you know, where you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever's necessary on this play to be disruptive. And you, you almost got to take his helmet away from him. I love those guys, you know. Um, we're running a seven-on-seven seven drill. And, you know, we're a four-down, three-down team. And uh, he's the four-down rush guy. You know, it's seven-on-seven. Seven. But he's collisioning the receivers coming across as the four-down rush guy. You know, stuff like that. That's just Prince, you know. And, so he just brings an energy to the team, a toughness to the team. Um, and he's so skilled at coming off the edge, too. Does he lead vocally, or does he lead with the... the he leads with his... Edge? No, he doesn't lead vocally. He, he's, uh, he's a guy that's not going to say much, but just his energy, his passion, um, and, and just his, his actions out on the field uh, and the way he works. You can just see by his uniform, is drenched every day about the work that he puts in uh, every single day. Brian, nickel and dime, we saw that today. What do yeah. you like about Cole Luke as the nickel as a freshman? And then Austin Collinsworth, a veteran guy, um, kind of speak to, to his role within that package. <clears throat> well, we like Cole because, you know, he's really close to being on the field at the cornerback position. So, you know, you're trying to look at, you know, who's your third, maybe, you know, one of the top corners that you have that you're getting on the field. Uh, coverage skill wise and uh, you know Collinsworth versatility we can run a lot more in our package with Collinsworth on the field so those two guys on the field give us uh, the ability to play a lot more man and then a lot more variety in those packages with those two guys on the field with Jalen I think the perception of the dog position it's so mentally taxing that a younger guy maybe not couldn't do it but it would be a real challenge what is it about his skill set or just his football IQ that allows him to be a candidate at a position like that well, that could be. I mean, look, it, it, you know, when it, when it comes to coaching, if we make it that complicated that I can't get Jalen Smith on the field, then we're not really good coaches. I mean, it, it's that simple. I mean, and if, if Jalen Smith or Elijah Shoemate can't get on the field or I can't get Cole Luke on the field or we can't get Steve Elmer on the field, then, then we're missing the boat. So, yeah, I mean, we can make it as complicated as we want, but we got to get those kinds of players on the field. We got to get, you know, Corey Robinson on the field in certain situations. So, yeah, there's some complexities to it, but I think we can make it such that we can get talented players like Jalen Smith on the field. How is the kicking game shaking out? I think it's shaking out pretty good. Um, pretty good competition um, in preseason camp between Tausch and Brinza. Now, I. I, I I really wanted an open competition between Tausch and Brinza for kicking. Although, as we all know, Brinza did a heck of a job last year. But to bring Tausch back, I wasn't going to bring him back unless I gave him a chance, 
you know, to unseat Brinza. Secondly, I wanted Brinza to focus on punting. So I kept it wide open, and today will be our final evaluation before we go into next week on the kicking job. I'll have all the numbers. We'll start crunching the numbers. We had a lot of kicks, a lot of live kicks, um, and we'll, we'll start to factor that in. But both of those guys got a lot of kicks and, and uh, relative to field goals, and we'll get a better feel for that. The punting job, uh, Brinzer and Wolfuk, uh, those are the two guys um, that, that have been battling out for that. And, and I think both of those guys uh, have shown uh, that, we can, um, that we can get the job done at the punting end as well. I just want to ask, Terry and Falston? Yeah, he had a death in the family, um, so he was excused from practice. Safety position. Uh, you know, with, sorry, with uh, Elijah Shoemate, do you think that he's starting to nail that position down, or is that still pretty much a competition right now? No, I mean he's going to be on the field. Um, I don't, I don't think that Elijah's nailed down anything, but he's going to be on the field. I think he's he's a guy that every day has got to continue to, you know, progress. He's got some guys behind him that, you know, are playing pretty good. You know, Collinsworth, Hardy. You know, Turner's playing good. You know, we dropped down Turner. He's playing some dog as well. Um, those other guys are playing well behind him as, as, as well. But um, we're pleased with, with him. But I, I don't think we're at that point where we're saying that he's got anything, you know, nailed down. I think we're still, we're still moving along there. Cool. Good? Excellent. Thanks. Thank you.